Okay, hey everyone, I'm Joe Guskowski, Senior Editor with Restaurant Business. I'm here with Brooks Shaden of uh, Tom's Watch Bar. Uh, Brooks, tell us a little bit about Tom's for those of us who might not know uh, what that concept is. Yeah, absolutely. Tom's is uh, is a, a modern sports bar, and what we really want to try to do is bring something different and better to what people typically think of as a sports bar. And really core to our belief is that sports is about community, and we wanted to bring some play build some place that brings what people want for the way they watch sports now. If you think about sports betting, fantasy leagues, all of the different sports that people are watching, whether it's NFL and college football that we're on this weekend, but also Formula One, WNBA, international soccer, it's really expanding the way people watch sports uh, and how they watch sports and when they watch it. So we really wanted to bring something new that brings that all together and provide what people want uh, as sports fans. Well, you seem to have hit on a, a good concept because you're growing quickly. Uh, tell us how many locations you have now. Yeah, we just opened our 17th location in Cincinnati. We have two more that are about to open uh, in the next few weeks. And so we'll be at about 20 by the end of this year with a target towards uh, closing in on 30 by 2026. And do you look for markets that have a lot of sports fans, a lot of sports teams? How does that work? Yeah, that's a really big part of it. I mean, we've been in the restaurant business all our lives, and you spend a lot of time looking at traditional real estate, demographics, uh, data and analytics. But what we're now finding with the access to even more and more information, we're looking at things like sports viewership, uh, sports betting participation, fantasy league participation, all those things to understand, yeah, this is a great market, good restaurant market, but are there a lot of sports fans and how active are they and how active are they coming out to watch sports? Is there a market you've gone into that surprised you in terms of the response you got that people might not expect as like a big sports market? Yeah, the I use, often use Minneapolis as the one that surprised us the most, mostly because we knew it was a good sports town, um, knew that it was a great market, but it just blew us away. We did two or three times what we thought we were gonna do there. And I call it kind of the multi-generational sports fan where you, you, you go in on a Sunday and we're nowhere near really the Viking stadium. But you'll see, you know, grandfather, son, grandson, all in jerseys. They come out before the game. They come back after the game. There's just a passion in a town like that. And so we've really loved the Midwestern towns, you know, Texas, Florida, some of those markets that have just really great, passionate sports fans. Yeah. Um, so we're at a tech conference. So we should probably talk about tech. Tell us how you're using uh, tech at, at Tom's. Yeah, I think one of the most obvious ways that we're using it now and we're trying to evolve is how do we learn how sports fans watch and when they come in. So different from traditional restaurants, we don't get all of our business just from restaurant or our lunch and dinner day parts. We're really driven by people coming in to watch games. And so if you think about this past weekend, Saturday and Sunday for football, we have to pay a lot of attention to who's playing. Are they at a 10 o'clock game or a noon game or a two o'clock game? Are these big rivalries? You know, uh, Michigan or Ohio State could be really popular teams, but if they're playing teams that are a blowout or if it's early or late in the season, all of those factors really pay in, play into how our traffic uh, demand comes in. And, and again, if you think about those, those surges of events, we can't afford to be off, whether it's on our food or our labor, overall staffing and how we just plan around the whole day and the run of show, uh, we have to really make sure we're precise on that. Otherwise, we're going to get surprised with, you know, a thousand fans coming in at 10 a.m. when we weren't expecting it or vice versa. You're expecting them and they're not coming in. And some of those days are more obvious. Then we also really have to pay close attention to those other days because there's more and more events. A WNBA game that may or not have been that popular a while ago, but now with some of the uh, increased viewership is really driving traffic. So uh, a Wednesday that might have been slow now might be really busy because there's a new sporting event on. So we're building out our databases and our forecasting, our labor management all around, making sure we take in all of that information. And, and with AI, it's just making us better and better at what we do. That's so fascinating. I mean, it's such a unique challenge to have because of the way your concept is built yeah um how about for like sporting events you know i know there's a lot of uh soccer fans they follow the premier league but that's a whole different time zone yeah does that lead to sort of funny situations at the restaurant yeah it, it does um so we need to watch the traffic to demand but we also spend a lot of time with data to understand who our guests are and kind of to that point to get a sense of who's coming in and make sure we space out the day. And you know, this last weekend was a great example. On Saturday, we had 
uh, you know, I'll use Minneapolis as an example. We had events going on kind of hour by hour, day by day. It felt like we were, you know, programming the Oscars because we really had to, all right, this group comes in from nine to 10 and then this group goes out. Now this group comes in. And so we really have to plan that out. Um, we try to do a lot with teams and fan clubs um, and alumni group. And to your point, we have to be really careful to make sure we schedule it so that you don't have, you know, too many alumni groups all coming in the same time, planning to see their group. So we have a, a private event team, a coordination team that's using a lot of scheduling tools and our CRM databases to make sure that we really schedule things out to avoid those moments. But I would say we, we've also found that we don't want to be, you know, just home to one team and then everybody's gone. We think that there's a, there is a healthy tension when you get both the opposing teams in there together. We just have to find that right balance. Yeah. And you'll show, you have a lot of TVs in your restaurants and you'll show some more like sort of off the beaten path kind of sporting events, right? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's a good point. We, um, you know, there's a lot of sports going on, but there's always downtime. You know, there's commercials or sometimes it's just a blowout. And so we like to keep some other things on the TV that are, are, are more entertaining. Um, you know, we love to use the example of slap face, which is <laughs> growing in popularity. And so you'll, you'll kind of see once it starts to get a, to be a blowout and you know, whatever your favorite team football game is, people's eyes will start veering off towards what's going on over on that screen. And, and so we like to try to keep it fun with a few other obscure sports. And, uh, you know, ESPN has a, a, a series that they run with obscure sports too. I was, I saw, you know, national pillow fighting and, uh, Papa Shaw Championship. So there's there's sports for everyone. Yeah. Um, stepping back a bit, you mentioned AI. It's obviously a big conversation here at, at FS Tech. It's kind of a buzzword. Where do you see AI going in the next few years? Do you see it continuing to impact restaurants or are we sort of in the middle of a hype cycle right now? Yeah, I, I, I think a little bit of both, my personal opinion. I, I view it uh, as really kind of two buckets. One, how does it make us better at what we already do versus fundamentally replacing things? How do I take in more information so that I can give our operations team more and more data to be more clear about what's going on? So like we were just talking about, are the fans going to show up at 10 o'clock or 1030 or 11 o'clock? Getting more information to be just that much more precise about how they staff the restaurant, order food, whatever it might be. So I, to me, that's probably the most important is how do we use AI to just get a little bit better? Um, and then the other big piece for us especially is how do we use AI, whether that's through different um, marketing tools, database tools, credit card analysis, to know who our customers are better? Because we have a lot of different occasions. We don't always have just one core customer like a lot of groups might be. Our core customer on a Saturday for college football may be very different than a Wednesday for a WNBA game. And so making sure we know who all of our customers are and using AI tools to kind of sort that and understand what the occasion is so we're presenting for the right tool. I, you know, I, I think there is a tremendous amount of change going on, but I don't see it fundamentally changing how we do a business. I think it's, there's a lot of tools to make us better at what our business is. Yeah. Okay, last question. Obviously you follow sports, you kind of have to. Yeah. Uh, we're getting close to the baseball playoffs. Who's your World Series pick? Ooh. I don't know. You know, it's funny. We often joke about how we care less about who wins. We just want it to be the teams that are in our markets and we want every game, every series to go seven games. <laughs> so uh, I, I won't make any predictions only because it's like picking your favorite child these days. We now the nice part is we now have uh, locations around the country where it benefits us in all markets. So we're becoming uh, our, our, our sports affiliations are becoming uh, very specific to the, mar the markets that we're in. But we just want to see seven games for everything, keep them close, keep it exciting. Well, so do we. I mean, yeah. everyone wants a seven game series. Exactly. All right. Well, thanks so much, Brooks. It was great talking to you. Yeah, I appreciate it, Joe. Thanks a lot.